Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It is Geekonomics. We are back another week. Brian is in uh, Angel Land or whatever he's got going on behind him. The bright lights, big city of Enfield. We are here. We are talking all things nerd that have happened in the past week. Uh, Brian is continuing to do this show separate from me because he's afraid I'll slap him because that's the thing to do nowadays. Yes. I S Slap a person. I'm afraid... I, I'm definitely afraid of being slapped, so I stay. Yes. I don't even leave the house anymore. Yes, when you do, I, you leave in a bubble. I actually went to get my mail, and the mailman was walking away from the door. And yeah. as I opened the door, he literally turned around and he was going to give me the backhand. Ugh. He was like this. He was like, "Don't you dare!" And then I was like, "Don't you talk about open. any movies that I might be in?" I shut the door, and he's yeah. like, "That's what I thought." That's what I thought. Yeah, and then exactly. I opened the door again to get the mail. And he went, oh, oh, don't you dare. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the door on, that, he's like, yeah. oh, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. You're like rushed to and from places so you don't get near people that might slap you. Yeah. I have to wear a helmet. Slapping, as I'm calling it. The slapping. I like that. The slapping. Yes. It's just hands that are just like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People just get, they just start slapping people. They have yeah. no reason why. Yeah. I can't stop. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do this. M. Night Shyamalan's next movie is going to be slapping. The Slappening. It's a sequel to The Happening. Mark Wahlberg just walks around slapping people for two hours. And then when he slaps you, he says, say hi to your mother for How's me. How's your mother doing? How's your mother doing? Say hi to your mother Come for on. me. Slap. Hitting people in the back of the head. Yeah. Don't be an idiot. Don't be an idiot. Slap. I, you know... As much as I hate the happening, I might pay to see that movie. You might pay to see Slappening. See, I, we, yeah. should, we should do this. We can make money off of this. Yeah. I mean, Will, I, Will Smith could cameo and just slap a random person. It could start off, the movie could start off with that scene from the. I mean, Oscars. instead of cameo now, you have people you can hire celebrities to slap you. Yes. Yes. It's like let's, cameo. It was called go, Slappio. Let's go back to the movie, right? Yes. The beginning starts off with the Oscar uh, moment. Yes. Yes. And then what happens is people get infected. That's yes. how he infects everybody with the he's, slapping. He's patient zero. He's patient zero. And we all become infected with the. Yes. With, with First, you laugh moment. about something and then you randomly get mad about it and rush yeah. up on people and slap them for no reason. Right. Really. It becomes an epidemic. Yes. Um, then that's my like, whole thing on this whole thing going back to the real thing that happened when in that moment of walking up from this, his seat to getting up to Chris Rock in his head do you think he was like what am I going to do when I get to Chris Rock <laughs> what's going to happen here and what like thought process do you start with do I punch him do I slap him do I just get in his face like, I've already committed to doing something. Yeah, he committed all right. But, like, you couldn't have just, like, stayed in your chair and saw him afterwards? And be like, hey, man, that was pretty jerky. Like, where in your, like, I know Rocky's brought up in the group chats and stuff, like, oh, if someone said something about Allison or Claire or Kristen or anybody, Stephanie, we would go up. I'm like, I don't think I would, like, my first instinct would be just to run up and slap somebody. No, that wouldn't be my first instinct either. My first instinct would be like, okay, I need to talk to that person afterwards. Yeah. Like, hey, man, yeah. that was yeah. not uncool. cool. It was uncool, yeah. I don't think I need to do this in front of millions of people on live television. Right, totally. I also think you're conf we're conflating the two between a, co a, com a comedian coming on stage who's roasting people or if someone was that just got in front of you intentionally and just, and, getting in, yeah. and verbally went after you. Yes. you know, Chris Rock and Will Smith are friends. I mean, they've been in shows. Well, I guess there was a falling together. out or something. So there was like a pre thing to this. That's all, what I'm hearing. But all, all that aside, I yes. think, I but think even still, it's like knowing who you are. My thing on this, I didn't see it happen live. I saw it after the fact. I know I saw it. Live. I tried watching the first five seconds of the Oscars. And as soon as I saw Amy Schumer on it, I was out. I'm like, I'm good. Wow, I, she was great. I can't stand Amy Schumer. I'm probably the only person in the world who doesn't like her. I just don't think she's funny. I don't find her like shtick interesting. So anyways, that's my own thing. 
I have my own preference on that. But and it was just like listening to the first five minutes and then they introduced the DJ. I'm like, OK, this is no longer my Oscars. I'm too old for this. I'm out. So I was done with it. So anyway, so I saw it after the fact. But like listening to the Chris Rock's delivery of the comment, it definitely was not like. It was a bad joke. It wasn't even it was a bad joke. That was just a thing. He saw the corner of his eye kind of thing. Like he saw Jada sitting there and he just like was in the process of just throwing out things. Like there wasn't any, any premeditation to it. I don't think, I think no. it was just, I see a person she's got short hair. We're at a movie thing. GI Jane, boom, joke, throw it out there. See what happens. I don't think he was like, I know that you have a thing and I'm going to go after you about it. I agree. It wasn't. And malicious. the thing that Will Smith was laughing when they show him laughing as yeah. the joke is being said. Yes. And then he turns and sees Jada's reaction to it. And that's when he freaked out. But I still don't think I would have ever like, I would stop laughing and get aggravated. I don't think my next thought process would be, I need to rush the stage and slap this guy. Yeah. So that's where my thing. I don't know where that goes. Well, the chair in the top of the whole thing is um, when Will Smith won the Oscar. Yeah. He goes up there and starts crying and, yes. say, and say how he's a vessel for love. Yes. Now, I'm sorry. Uh, what I witness is not a vessel of love. Yes. Um, to me. Especially the fact that he went back to his chair after slapping him. They didn't like say anything to him when he got up there slapped him walked all the way back to his chair and they weren't like close to each other no he yelled at him when he sat down no i'm saying but like his chair and chris rock were not like in front of each other really like not like standing in front of him the chair wasn't like a stage chair chris rock it was chris like chair stage chris rock set back a good like 10 feet on the stage yeah there's a distance he had to get to and back to like enough where Chris Rock could make comments before he sat back down. He did yell at him afterwards too. Yeah, he and then swore out. at him saying to keep her name out of your mouth. But then I feel bad ultimately for Questlove because Questlove won the Oscar for his documentary, yeah. um, which he should be very proud about. And that, that slap kind of overshadowed that moment for Questlove. I think the thing that we all need to realize is, and I said this to Claire last night because we were talking about it, I'm like, Will Smith needs to also thank Chris Rock for the fact that Chris Rock didn't then just destroy him instantly afterwards. But he's like the one person you don't slap would be Chris Rock when he has a microphone on him. Yeah, but he's he could then like, because he literally like you could see the process in his eyes as this like after it happened, he like got up, said what he said, but Chris Rock like re- rebounded from the slap, processed it in his head like, I just got slapped by Will Smith. And then, like, look down at them, and like, you could see like his look of like, I could literally destroy you in five seconds. And then, like, the like thing of do not do this, you're professional, you know? Because like, if someone were to slap me, my first instinct would be to probably not slap them back instantly, but to destroy them emotionally. Like, you're gonna slap me, but not the guy that slept with your wife. That would be my first comeback. <laughs> That's what I would have went with. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, he's a professional. I think he ha- he's a yeah. stand-up. He knows how to handle these moments because... Oh, I know. But it was just kind of like... It, I think... And today I saw that Chris Rock apologized without a press... Like a release saying that he was sorry for everything he said. He didn't mean anything by it or anything. But to me, it comes out... Chris Rock comes out looking better than this than Real Smith does. Yeah, I agree. Will Smith apologized on Instagram today too. Yeah. Um, but I do believe that yes, I think in my opinion. I mean, the person Chris that's Rock gonna benefit from this, Chris Rock is launching a world tour where if you don't think there's gonna be at least a minute or two to five minutes of act of Chris Rock talking about this every night, then you don't know how comedians work. Whereas any interview will smith does for winning the oscar is it going to be about him winning the oscar it's going to be about him slapping chris rock 
if anybody has the balls to be talking about the slap because well, why wouldn't you if you're a decent journalist why wouldn't your first question be what what was your mindset when you like walked up and just cold cocked chris well, rock from, i kind of feel like, like will, why would you will smith's gonna talk about it eventually like, do you not know where you were i honestly like i feel like by friday i'm hoping we're done talking about this but, i don't think that's how this works um, i don't think you understand how the news cycle works no i know but i'm already sick of it but like i'm just saying like if I'm sure Will Smith will talk to someone of his choosing. Oh, there'll be an Oprah him. interview where he goes yes. to a yes. deep sleep. There'll be it's, like a hard, like sit down interview with Will Smith. Will Smith to talk already about all the did, issues he's going already through. Already partied with the Oscars. He's not. No one's talking. They know he won. If anybody were to bring it up, I'm sure it's going to be a tightrope because you don't. People are going to be like, "Is he going to slap me?" <laughs> like if I, I, bring just, it up? I just think it's like one of those things where it's like if you're 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 not to me which is i don't know we like journalists nowadays ask everything like there isn't like a no like holds barred anymore there's not like you can you know it's like you won the oscar usually the person that wins the oscar goes on a publicity tour after winning the oscar to promote the movie that they were in to re get the movie back out again. Yeah. See, it's like that will he's, hurt like King Richard movie getting back out there again. Cause you would be like, well, that's he won, like, he won the gonna... Oscar. People are already seen it. it. He is going to pick and choose who he wants to oh, talk I, I to. I know, about. I know, yeah. but it's just like, yeah. It's and just... I mean, celebrities rule when it comes to entertainment journalism, Mark. I mean, uh, the celebrities kind of rule over what they are allowed to be asked and what not to talk about. I mean, that's the nature of the beast. If, if so-and-so wants to be interviewed by someone, they're going to be like, if this is a sensitive topic, I don't want to talk about it. And we have seen celebrities walk out of interviews when that journalist decides to press them on said subjects. I mean, there's yeah. multiple two, you can go on YouTube and see oh, I know. Yeah, people yeah, yeah. walking out. Yeah. Just be like, yeah. I don't, I'm not talking about that. Yeah. So I could see Will Smith is so powerful in Hollywood that he could easily pick an Oprah or somebody that'd be like, I, I'm willing to talk about it with you. Yeah. But and I think it's I one think of those things where it's going to have to get talked about sooner or later. You can't just like go around to these things and not expect it to be somewhat mentioned or brought up here or there randomly. I agree with you, but I don't. Because people are going to remember him slapping Chris Rock more than they're going to remember him winning the Oscar. Well, that meme is going to be is going to outlive the both of them. I think yes. the way yeah. it's going right yeah. now. I mean, it's it's as popular as the Bernie and Mittens meme went, and I think this it's, is going to be bigger. It's all I know from the Oscars. I couldn't tell you anyone who won besides Will Smith winning because anyone talks about like, oh, he slapped a guy and then won the Oscar. I couldn't tell you anyone else who won an Oscar. I don't even know who the best picture winner was. Coda? Um, was that the name of it? I yeah, don't even Coda. know. Never even heard of the movie before. Yeah, Coda won. I wasn't yeah. even into the Oscars this year because I didn't see any of the movies. So it's like, what's the point? Me neither. I don't know any of these movies. And Me the movies either. that I have seen aren't going to get any play because the Oscars don't think that those movies are real good movies. We, like we, No we, Way we, Home, any of those movies like that aren't going to be in the Oscars. Like Dune got a ton of nominations. Yeah, it was great. I couldn't sit through Dune. I was happy for Dune. That was the only movie I was happy that was winning. Yeah. But yeah. beyond that, I I we watched it just out of habit. We didn't watch yeah. it because we didn't see any of the movies either. So. No, because it's like you can't like unless you have Apple Plus, you never saw the Best Picture winner. If you don't have Netflix, which there probably not many people don't have Netflix anymore, but even still, you Everybody didn't see has that a Netflix. Yeah, but you didn't see Power of the Dog because it wasn't like a movie that was promoted by Netflix that much that you would like have watched it. But the Golden Globes does make me want to watch some of these films. I do want to see Power of the Dog. I do yeah. want to see. But Coda. there was no Golden Globes this year that were on television, so you didn't know. Yeah, you didn't have any like inkling of any of these movies. Right, Golden Globes is usually an indicator of things to come. Yeah. Anyway, that's what happened. It's a funny thing. I love. Yeah. I love the memes coming out of it. Um, yeah it's interesting uh people have their hot takes and i think everyone mm. has a valid when it comes down to it i really i personally don't have a big opinion about it. it i don't agree with violence of any kind so slapping yeah. punching i don't agree with but 
Um, it's interesting to hear the takes. I, I am more interested in hearing what people think about it, personally. To me, it's just kind of like, it, to me, the whole thing was looking at it from just Will Smith's side. I understand the, the his thought process a tiny bit behind it, but I can't get over the thing of, you know where you are. Yeah, in front of a camera, live TV. Yeah, it's like, yeah. do not think this is going to just be everywhere. Like, yeah. I don't think anyone could make me angry enough like that unless they physically did something to Claire or threw yeah. something at Claire where I would like get that past that point where I would have to do something. And it was a comedian making a bad joke. It wasn't even a good joke, nor, nor like, yeah, it was just, if and I- And Jerry Jane's not a terrible reference because it's that movie, like to me more was a badass in that movie. So- I mean, if you like, that's my took it as like, oh, well, yeah, you're going to be in G.I. Jane too because you're a badass because you, you know, you already got the look for it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's what I, I took I, it I, as. I didn't take it as like a derogatory thing. And I didn't even know she had that disease until after the joke came. Like, people most said people that. didn't. Most people yeah. didn't. So it's like, how is, you know? Yeah. I agree. I agree with yeah. that. I agree. With there that. was a lot of just weirdness. It would be involved. like, it would be like if I went to a comedy club and I sat in the front row. And the comedian picked on me, and I got there, got up there and slapped him. Be like, first of all, I'm in a comedy setting. You're getting arrested. Yeah. First I, off, but I, if I was Will Smith, I wouldn't be arrested. But, well, I think that's one thing that I think is the one issue with this whole thing is he shouldn't be arrested unless Chris Rock wanted to file charges. I don't believe, and it's a slap. Chris Rock. I think it, in my opinion, it's between those two. No, I know, but I'm just saying it's just. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, should be arrested. I did see multiple comedians like put that out, like what you just said. Like, unfortunately, there's going to be people now that think I could do what Will Smith does and just go up and slap a comedian if they get me, like aggravate me. And it's like that's not cool. It's like it's kind of like do you not understand like you set a precedent, kind of. Well, like, hopefully not. But um, I, I'm just saying, like. I think there's, it's Chris Rock. He's kind of go out there. I mean, Ricky, yeah. Ricky, Ricky Gervais has obliterated people uh, during the Golden Globes. Well, like the thing I saw today was like, even I think Howard Stern said it. He was like, if that was The Rock that said that, do you think Will Smith would have went up there and slapped him in the face? No, who would be slapping The Rock? <laughs> exactly. It's like he was a, like, I, oh yeah, I can slap Chris Rock because he's a small guy. I could go slap him and that'd be fine. But if it was like Vin Diesel or someone like that, that was a little bit more jacked. Well, I don't think Will Smith been been running up there to slap people in the face. Yeah. But anyway, a lot more other things, other things happen in the world other than that. Yeah. Uh, One thing. That's a big topic that's been going around. It is. It is. But I, I, let's, let's, let's change topics because. Stay tuned for the slapping. We'll be releasing that this summer. Yeah. This summer. Uh, Someone who uh, means a lot to me and and to you, I'm assuming. Yes. Taylor Hawkins passed away. And to me. Yes that is way more important than the slapping. I, I still can't get over it. I still, I, I know I, on text message, Mark, I said to you, I'm like, Oh, I might watch the Lollapalooza show that happened. Yeah. And then I, I said, can't, I can't, I can't, I can't even, I haven't to watched Foo anything. Right Foo Fighters. I haven't even touched. I haven't listened to a song. Yeah. I haven't watched a video. I, I heard a song on the radio and I was, it just depressed me uh, right yeah. now. And, he was so well loved and liked by his peers, other musicians. Um, the, the support and love that came out from so many people. Um, it just shows what, what kind of character he was as a person. And he was my, just my, yes. he was just on Mark Hoppus's uh, radio show two weeks ago. He's talking yeah. about his family. He was talking about how he got into drumming. You know, him and Dave Grohl are are, are best friends like yeah. they're they're musician soulmates yeah um so i can't even imagine what it's like lennon, going lennon mccartney kind of yeah i can't imagine our, with our the era family, is lennon mccartney with the family what grohl is going through i don't even know will the food fighters continue <sighs> that's a tough i think that i don't think yeah i don't, I don't think it's gonna happen instantly i think it's gonna happen soon like sooner or later he's gonna keep going it's just that's not you know yeah i mean yeah he already did it once unfortunately dave Grohl. yeah but i mean he created his own band 
Yeah, so, but I'm saying I think it's just one of those things. It's just I. Taylor Hawkins is part is like you know it's like some people in a band can be interchangeable, but for him, for Dave Grohl, Taylor Hawkins he felt like was an integral part of that band. So I understand that, yeah, but I think, I think one. that I think it's going to be a tough thing. But he's going to end up doing it sooner or later because you just have to get back on the horse kind of thing. You can't, you know, because like he did with when he invented Foo Fighters, he was like, I gotta, I can't not do music. So I think that's what's going to happen down the road. Not saying when, but down the road it'll happen. I mean, I hate the fact that it was possibly the way that what caused him to pass away. Well, it seems like it was a lot of prescription medication with other things. Now he was, he he was a, he was a formal addict. And when you're an addict, you're an addict for life. Yes. Even if you are real, even if you're clean or not, that's, part of it. Yes. Um, so he back in the early 2000s, he OD'd and he was like comatose for a couple a couple days. And yeah. Dave Grohl talks about this in a documentary that came out about yeah. that. And he waited by his side for days until he woke up. Yeah. Um, and Taylor Hawkins has talked about how he does not want to be he does that that's not his life anymore. You know, so I, you know, he did have a cocktail of antidepressants, which are normal. Yeah. Um, it, it seems like it could have been a bad combination. Uh, I read a report something about his heart being really swollen and big. Yeah. Um, which I could be from back when he was like something that affected it from back when he was doing drugs back in the day. Yeah. I mean, that could have caused that. So, yeah. A part of me doesn't really want to know all the details. It's sad enough that he died. I, you know, I don't want to. Yeah. You know, I mean, I hate the fact that, like, I don't hate the light. Like, I, as soon as you, I got the news, Chris Giard mentioned to me at like midnight, and I think it was Saturday night. Yeah. When it happened. And he messaged me on Facebook, on through Facebook, and told me what happened. And I hate this. Like, my first thought was, oh, another one to drugs. You know? Wow. It's tough. Uh, it's a t- once you know getting out of that addiction is a tough. It's a tough road. Well, I know. I, I mean, I we both know personally through connections to it that it's not the easiest thing to deal with. Yeah. I mean, I lost my uncle because of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Oh no, not another one." But. But um, it's yeah, just, it, it sucks because it's like you like. And it's even worse that it's, I think it was just because you just didn't think about it. Like you didn't want to think about it. You didn't want to know, like, like I didn't want to believe it at first. I was like, oh, maybe it was someone, you know, but and we just saw the movie. Yeah. yeah. They were in and everything. Yeah. And I'd said to Claire after she's like, how's the movie? I'm like, it was great. Just Taylor didn't look healthy. Like, I don't know, he's always been, sh- like, very thin. It's the way he's always looked, though. I know, but really he just always looks thin. very, like, real thin. Like, I jokingly said to Claire, I'm like, he looks like look like James. He's always very thin and gaunt looking. So, yeah. But, no, it was a tough one. It's been tough. I haven't, like I said, haven't listened to anything Foo Fighters, haven't watched the video. I can't. I see that video pop up all the time on YouTube about their last performance, his last song. Yeah, that he sang at Lollapalooza, whatever there, and I'm like, I, I can't do it. I can't. I mean, I I will say this. I will say let's let's end this on a positive. I'm happy that we got to see the Foo Fighters with Weezer and Ha Ha. He, yes, in New yes. In Bridgeport, right? Bridgeport. Bridgeport. Yeah. I'm very thankful we got that opportunity. Um, yeah. I'm I am thankful that I my first time ever getting high. I got to watch their three-hour set on Coachella last summer in my living room. Um, and that was on an edible, which I've never taken yes. before in my life. It got me high, and I really had a good time in my bedroom watching Foo uh, Fighters play a three-hour set. And I was blown away that they played yeah. for three hours. And the, yeah. that's how long – they've been playing two and a half to three-hour sets, yeah. um, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, and 
the that metal band they created the album dropped on friday yes yeah which is yeah. really good by the way it is it's um, really good um so they have a a great body of work yeah. his legacy will will live on thankfully um something he could his family can be proud of and he could you know um so i i think to go back to the beginning of the conversation I think you're right. I think there will become a time where Dave Grohl will say, we're going to go on a final tour or yeah. we're going to do something. Like if a tribute are, tour to Taylor or something. Yeah, or... we might do something of that nature. Will we get another Foo Fighters out proper album? I, I don't know. I mean, we don't I know. Think I, yeah, I, like I said, I think it's just, I don't see Dave being the type to just like, I know like close up shop, so to speak, but I think it's just, I think he's just, I don't know. I feel like the worst, like I hate to say it, the worst for him because it's the second time he's gone through this. He's not the second time he's gone through it. Like he's gone through it a bunch with guys that he knows, but for two bandmates that he's had have this happen. I I can't even imagine yeah, I can't even imagine like that, you know. So I, I'm sure we'll hear something. I do recommend reading his, uh, Dave Grohl's book. He does talk yes. about Taylor in there, which it's yeah. really heartbreaking. But it's a great book. It came out last year. I think it's like it Storytellers did. or something of that nature. Yes, it was Storytellers. The name of it. Yes. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I like I said, I want to end that on a positive. I'm thankful that. We got to see them live, so yeah. And I'm thankful just, we got to see the movie because that yeah, was amazing. That was a lot of fun, and I it was will, fun, stupid fun. Yeah. So yeah, that does it. Did, it did, I can't believe that happened in the beginning oh, of the gosh. weekend. I was literally gutted. I like yeah. couldn't like sleep that night. It was tough. I woke up to your message, Mike McConnell. I was tempted to text me. you, but I didn't want. No, to, you like, you text Mike. I woke up. Oh, okay. Mike had texted me. I woke up yeah. to that. Yeah. And then I texted you and you had texted the group. Yeah. My phone's not near me. So you can text me all night long and I'll never know it. I know, I but up. I just like, I like, as soon as I heard the news, my first thought was that I wanted to reach out to you and tell you about it. But then I was like, I don't want to, cause I know you're probably sleeping. Cause I know you go to bed at like eight o'clock at night. Cause you're 90 years old. I go to bed at like nine. Yeah. So I was like, I don't want to ruin your sleep if you wake up to go to the bathroom or something and you see it. I don't want to make like I'll let you. I didn't tell Claire until the next day. So I was like, I'm just going to keep it and I'll talk about it tomorrow. I don't want to yeah. ruin people's nights I, any more than I've already been ruined because I <laughs> literally couldn't sleep that night. I didn't go to bed till like four Jesus. finally because I wow. couldn't like it's just like I don't Man. know why it just like it hit me. It was yeah. like it was a combination of just like, I think being a huge fan of the Foo Fighters, being a huge fan of his and like his own stuff from the Kota Writers stuff back in the day. Least and he just yeah. like yeah. came out with the, the thing that him and Chris Navarro were doing or Dave Navarro were doing where they're doing like a punk and they were doing some kind of music thing I heard about. I was going to look into that. And then I think like the main thing was just how young he was and it being so close to our age that I think it just hit me a little bit differently than other ones have. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I think it affects you. I don't know about you, but it affects me more when it's someone closer to my age that it happens to. Yeah. Cause I it's agree. just like, Oh man, that's like, that's really like close to where, my neighborhood basically you know what i mean yeah yeah it's weird when people that we grew up and we're around the same age they start passing away yeah it's different when we were kids older people would die yeah you had no connection to them now exactly the people we have connections to yeah they're close to our age are dying yeah. and you're just that was my like, first thought it's kind of like the gate like the in the introduction to this new phase of life where oh you're gonna lose a lot more people than you gain yeah, you know, it was funny. I, w I was talking to Allison about this, and I said, once we get past 60, yeah, it's either we're going to live long enough to see all our friends die, or yes. we're going to be one of those friends who will die early. 
and yes. I don't know which way the life will go, but that's I mean, I hope, the, I hope the first one, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, my grandfather, all his friends are dead. Yeah. He's literally seen all his yeah, friends. Yeah, at a certain age, you it's don't weird. make new friends. Yes. It's very difficult. It's very, it makes it less easy to make new friends than it is to make nowadays. Uh, luckily, we have a lot of friends still. Luckily, so yeah. Yeah, 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 so. Lot of, yeah. So let's move on to something happier to talk about because that yeah. was getting depressing. All right. Anyway, oh, wow. I thought sorry. we were doing it at the end of the show, but thank you for doing it in the very beginning. We so got it. It's like it a band-aid. Off on a good note. It's like a band aid, Mark. We just Jeepers. we just ripped it right off. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's talk about how. Oof, thanks for coming to the sleeping depressing show. Jeez. All right. I have one one show I want to recommend. That is okay. it. I don't want to recommend. I have nothing else to recommend this week. This is kind of what we do, but go ahead and continue with your. Only going to recommend one show because that's all we do is talk about shows that people should watch. No, I know, but other things <laughs> too. I'm also reading a uh, Bunny Mask uh, graphic novel, which is really good. Okay. Um, but anyway, the one show, the one show I I recommend to you, Mark. And, and ninety Day Fiance. There, no, no. <laughs> Fixer it's upper. On, oh. It's it's on Hulu. It's Spring action. Baking Championship. Actually, I think these names are great. Just keep going. <laughs> I'm just going up with the commercials I see while Claire's watching the Food Network of shows that I think are like the randomest names of shows ever. Okay, so there is a show that's from Canada that Hulu airs. That Degrassi. Hulu has been putting out for the, for, I think, I'm going to look, I think it went to, they're on 10 seasons. The Tower. Seven episodes per season, mm-hmm. so it's quick. They're half-hour episodes. It's called okay. Le- Letter Kenny. Letter Kenny. It takes place. You're in just finding out about Letter Kenny now. Yes. Why you've seen this show? Yes, it's a hockey show. Of course, I've seen it. How you never talked about it? Because it's not anything that I didn't think it'd be anything that would be worth talking about in the show. Dude, this show is amazing. It I is amazing. I literally blew through season one this weekend. I'm yeah. already halfway through season two. Um, uh, like the it's show, not like a show that people don't know about either. It's a pretty popular show, so I figured. I've never heard it. anybody under the sun talk about this. Oh well, I guess because I I think when you you work in hockey, it comes up more. So I think I yeah, just kind of. Yeah, but I mean, just, it's not. It's not. Totally... I mean, like if there was a racing show out, people I would know about that too, and just wouldn't talk about it because. But, it doesn't, about it, with other people. it doesn't revolve around hockey that other than two guys who play hockey it, there's it a lot more, more into it there's I a lot more, more yeah there's a lot more to the show than it being hockey i mean you have the goth kids you yes. have the hicks you have yeah. the christian uh guy yes who, um you you have the two hockey knuckleheads yeah. um but and then like you have the sister the characters are fantastic i can't get enough it's so yeah. quotable Yes. Like um it's a hard no or yeah. it's a te- it's a Texas 10 10 4 or yes. like all these little, like fun little things they say. Yeah. Uh It was like, a, yeah, it's been around for a while now. It's pretty popular. It's as popular there as Shit's Creek was. But I don't live in Canada, Mark. Yeah. I'm talking about Because here. it doesn't air like it didn't doesn't have a home here, so to speak, Hulu, besides Hulu. Hulu now, but I'm saying regular television didn't have a home like Shit's creek was on pop television which was a channel that you could watch here yeah but so i'm saying i don't think there's a place that airs it here that people can find it yeah so what i'm telling you is i've heard nobody ever talk about this this show ever neither no. but well, I my group of hockey it. friends we talk about it all the time so that's why i think i just don't think about it well, I, I, I'm disappointed that you've never brought it up because the show is well, I apologize. It is amazing. I it's can't very get good. enough of it. I I'm can't... behind a couple seasons. I haven't watched the past couple. Well, they are doing a, a, a new spinoff. They're actually doing a live tour right now of yes. the show. Yes. Um, but man, I love this show so much. It's my favorite thing. Like, like I, you know me. It, it takes a lot for me to be like binge something. I like... I flew through the first season. Yeah, at least two episodes. Like in in a, this weekend. 
Yeah, like, I watched all six episodes and I couldn't stop watching. And t- like I watched three episodes yesterday. I'm in season yeah. two already. Um, the goth kids kind of remind me of someone. Um, Dan Wilkinson? Gonna, maybe. <laughs> um, uh, do you... Because well, I saw that as soon as I saw it too. So that's the why. main The main guy, he yes. reminds me of Dan a lot. Yes. Um, I would say... Um, the guy who plays Squirrely Dan reminds me of your brother. Yes. Big time. I mean, not only because he kind of looks like him, yes. but just what he, how he talks. And yeah. The beginning He's actually one. here editing right now, so if he hears yeah. it, come yell at you. So um, come slap I, you. Slap me. Um, I just watched the episode when he was there, there um, passing the baseball back and forth, and he starts talking about he's on a date. Yes. The girl wants to put her fingers in his butthole and she did yeah. it and then they stopped throwing the ball at him and they completely ignored him yes and scroll dance like so yeah it was euphoric i really yeah. enjoyed it and there yeah. it, well, it was hilarious yeah um and then the sister katie and then scrolly dance like that's what i appreciate about you and she'd be like that's not all you appreciate about me and then yeah. finally the season finale he goes it's because your sister's hot and then he, tra- he runs away. He's like, I regret nothing. And then he stops and he's like, I can't run anymore. I'm too fat. <laughs> Dude, the show is fucking amazing. The show is good, man. It's good. Dude, I... So, like, is, is that why you're drinking out of a Labatt Blue Cup now? You're I've always had Canadian? this. You're going full Canadian? I've had this 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 glass for a very, very long time. But I, I know, know, but now yeah. you're like using it because it's a Canadian cup. So you're like, I'm going full Canadian. I'm going full like, Canadian. Talking um, about what are you actually, talking about? This glass, you, you I drive the had Tim Horton from Chi Chi's. This is Chi Chi's glass. I know, I know. It's one of the glasses I want to steal from your house, but I like refrain from doing it. Um, but anyway, man, glass. I love this show so much, and I just I I I don't want to burn through it too quickly, but at the same time, I cannot stop watching it. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's I want to say like IFC was airing it. It could have been years ago. I think I watched it on there a couple times. I mean, the show has been on since 2016, 2015. Yes, it has, yes. So, um, and the, the, other than that, Mark, uh, you have any anything worth talking about this week before we get into I, Halo? Over the, week, over the weekend, uh, besides watching Halo, I finally uh, watched The Adam Project. On oh, Netflix. the movie Ryan we're Reynolds. supposed to watch and talk yes. about? Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, how was that? Yeah, it's it it wasn't it wasn't terrible. I I heard good things. It's definitely a streaming movie. I wouldn't have went to the theater and watched it. I would have been more depressed if I'd paid for it. That's for sure. Um, the uh, uh, the sorry, I got an email and the thing popped up and he distracted me. Um, there's definitely you could tell why it's a stream like a Netflix movie as you watch it. Yeah. Because the concept is good. I'm not going to like ruin it for anybody, but there's some CG stuff that's like, oh, this is why it's Netflix. <laughs> there's like a de aging thing they do. I, heard it, was, I heard it was, which is good. really bad. Yeah. They definitely did not get the Marvel technology. Um, but you enjoyed it overall. I enjoyed it. It was good. Ryan Reynolds is hilarious in it, he's really good. Him and Mark Ruffalo together is very funny. I definitely made me think about how awesome a Mark Ruffalo, Ryan Reynolds, Hulk, Deadpool movie would be. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was good. It was a this, this nice little under two hours movie. So you please breeze right through it. Nice. I'll have to check it out. It's um, yeah, you know. it's worth watching. So many, too many things want my time right now, but there are too many things. There are, There's there too are many too many things. Uh, I built the new uh, Lego dark trooper helmet. I saw it looks cool. Looks really cool. It's not as big as the other ones. So it's oh, less pieces. That's a shame. Well, less pieces wise, the same size as the other ones. Okay. Okay. But it's less pieces because the helmets like the robot helmets a little smaller. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's a breeze to get through. It's a quicker one. I mean, especially because it was in the first one I did after the R2-D2, which was intense. Yes. That's an experience. 
<laughs> just thoroughly getting it. It's worth the effort. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So did that. I still got the two, you know, the other two to get through. And then I saw your post about the dioramas. And as I'm looking at them, Claire's like, what are you looking at now? Why? I'm like, this is Brian's fault. Don't blame me. Brian sent this to us. And they now look, I want them. They look cool. I just don't know where I would put them. I like the helmet. That was my thing. That's my space thing. But I'm like, I could bring them to work, I guess, and put them here somewhere. Sad. But then that was like, no, that means I got to buy them now. So... And they're expensive too. They're like another 50, 60 bucks. It's the same price as the helmets. I know. And I thought they Which isn't well terrible. I felt like they should isn't be terrible. Like 40. Well, because they're in that collector series, and that's like the base price for the collector series. So that's why. Oh boy. The collector yeah. series. The yeah. Lego's got us by the ball yes. hairs right now. Yes. The member bearers. Yeah, ball hairs. Whatever they're called, yeah. But yeah, so that's the uh so that's what my weekend was basically. And then, uh, yeah, Sunday I went to Plainville, saw right. Andrew. He said to say hi, thanked us again for all the help in promoting the show. And he is going, potentially doing another show, which I'm not, he's not say. potentially doing a show. He is doing a show. It's he official. Oh, okay. I July 26th I'm, will be another Manchester show. I'm in. I already told him. Yes, and then October 2nd will be a Manchester show. So it's interesting because now they kind of like go back to back with East, East of the River too. Yes, East, East of the River is June. End of June. Yes, end of June. Yeah. Yes, so and next this next month is back to uh, Plainville for another CliffsCon. Last Sunday of every month. I know we never really promote it because it happens all the time. Yeah. But last Sunday of every month, CliffsCon at the Plainville VFW. You have to come check one out one of these days. Well, uh, maybe this month I can't. I was busy this past Sunday. Yeah. You say that every month, and then you're like, ah, I'm busy. I know. I, well, I might. We might go to the record they're doing in Plainville. They're doing a uh, record. I want to go to that. Yeah, my brother-in-law posted. He was thinking about going to it, too. I'm trying to find out if he actually is going to go or not. Yeah, we might go. We might go. Yeah. Uh, We got a new record player, and I fucking love it. And I've been blasting vinyl through the house. Nice. I went in my room upstairs in my office room. And that's all we have, really. But there's a guy that brings stuff to the CliffsCon. That's very interesting stuff. Records and stuff. A lot of sports records from back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I got a a Boston Bruins, like the year of 60-something review record from him. I have a Whalers record yeah it's but like stuff like on. that yeah, yeah like old like stuff like that yeah and he brings a lot of like old and i got like the uh three thousand year old man album the original oh that's cool from back in the day so i grabbed that from him last time so it's yeah it's just, it's a lot of eclectic stuff now at the uh, cliffs con which is fun because it's like stuff you might not see everywhere else right right i'll i'll so. I will try to go this month. Yes. In April twenty fourth. I'll remind you. All right. Um, last Sunday of every month at last Sunday. the Plainville VFW. Um. All right, Mark. Let's talk yes, about. Oh, really quick before I forget. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, we're gonna work on finding a day in the next month or two that Matt Ryan's gonna come on because he is just about done with his new book. Oh. Yes, Brenda okay. is almost ready to come out. So I'm excited. Well, he's thinking we'll have... in the next month or so he's going to have it printed and ready to go. So I, yes, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah. it's his take on like the Conan world. Yes, which is very interesting because he's a huge Conan fan. So I'm very yeah. interested. I've heard this pitch literally. We we're talking about it yes uh, on Sunday. He pitched this idea to me. He'd already started working on it. He had it mapped out, but not like drawn or anything. He'd pitched this to me, I want to say three to four years ago now at yeah. IHOP in Springfield before a show. We met for breakfast. Cause he's like, I got to talk to you about something. I need to get this out of my system to somebody. And I'm picking you to talk to about it, but you can't tell anyone about it afterwards. I'm like, do you know who I am? <laughs> it's like, Why are you doing this to me? Mark will tell everybody. Ah. So it's been very stressful. So I know the whole story. I just haven't seen it visually. I know what's happening and how it happens, but 
don't know like the the gears and works and how it got there so he's been wanting to like showing me this past this whole time like i want to show you how, i'm like no i don't want to see anything i know this story i want to be surprised and see like it's almost like when you read the book yeah and then you find out they're doing a movie about the book i want to be surprised i want to see them i want to see the movie when it comes out and i want to know how it was made right 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 so that's well, when we have them on the show right. we'll save it yeah. all for them and you can yes. tell us everything. Yes. And there's some other stuff in the works too that I'm working on. So, all right. Which I'll tell you about off camera. Yes. Tell me off of uh, yes. the show. All right. Let's get into the first episode of Halo. Did you watch it? I did. I did. I watched it on Thursday. Uh, yeah. It comes out on Thursdays. Uh, episode yes. two comes out this Thursday. Um, I, I enjoyed the first episode overall. Uh, I kind of disconnected that this is a different thing than the video games. So here's the caveat I'm going to throw at you. Yeah. We're coming at this in two different ways. We're going to come at this show in two different ways. You played the original game. I played them all. I did not. I only started playing it in Halo 2. It's when we started different. playing at John's house. This is a totally different story. So here's the thing I'm saying about how we're coming at this differently. You know the original story of yes. Halo. I do not. I know it just like the like the recap they have in Halo Halo Two at the beginning, like the world was this, the Covenant this. So I don't really know anything from Adam. So I'm going into this totally new. And I think that the viewership needs to think of it that way. Not many people that are watching this show like generally, general public, have ever played Halo? Well, a lot of folks who are into Halo are, wa I'm sure, going to watch the first Oh, I know what I'm saying, but the majority of the, the, I think a majority of the people that are going to watch this show, and it's marketing it to... It's marketing non, towards everybody, yeah. Everybody, it's, not it's, just yeah, people yeah. who played Halo. Right. Which is nice, because it's a different take on Halo. Yes, it's... It's its own thing. Yes. Um, I, I mean, I thought the action in the game was really well done. I enjoyed it all. I enjoyed the whole episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, they ripped the Band-Aid off by letting him take the, man, the helmet off, which was a little weird. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Is this, I understand why he did it in the context of the show. For me, it sort of worked. But I hope to God that this helmet it, doesn't just stay off of him now because it. I don't think it's going to because the way that the way that he fights, I don't think it'd be possible for it to happen. And there's like stuff in the trailers that we've seen, like Cortana is going to come around, and that's going to involve having the helmet on. You can't do that without the helmet on. No, yeah, no, she's going to be like just a hologram. She, he can have the helmet off. Well, I know, but I think that it's going to like there's going to be stuff that he needs like when he's in battle and things, the helmet will be on. I hope so. I think that we're under the weird thing <clears throat> because of Mandalorian. And people are like comparing the two and how this is a lower rent Mandalorian and all that. Is that it's two different worlds completely, two different stories completely. And the the fact that like we've kind of been spoiled with the fact that Pedro Pascal has been so like magnanimous basically of not showing his face constantly. Because they have rules. See, yeah. the Mandalorian it's has rules. For, it's very tough for an actor to just be like not showing your face in the whole thing, basically. You don't see who he is. But see, Master Chief, there is there is that he never took it off in the game, so it is kind of weird. Well, it's also a video you know, game, and it's also a first-person shooter video game. But his so would, I mean, they're super. You wouldn't soldiers. really have any reason for him to take his helmet off in the game, right? So, whereas I mean, in a TV show, it's a different medium. Yes, I agree. So, if you're just trying to convey anything with somebody that just has this bucket on their head. It's very difficult to do that. I mean, I think 
the with the whole helmet thing aside, I mean, overall, I thought the first episode, I give it an eight. I mean, I'll just say it right now. I enjoyed it. I thought I, I liked it a lot. And yeah, I wanted it was really to the, the aliens look awesome. Yeah. I, I think the covenant the, all looks really good for the most part. The CG was decent. It looked high budget. Yeah. Um, I don't Now, Is there like, I can't like, I'm going to you for this because you played the game and know the lore and all that there was there a human like connection to the covenant at all well do, what see in the halo doesn't really go into the humans really much i mean it's so it's interesting they're going to really focusing on the humans in this so this is the least popular or least uh, interesting thing about the games were the humans but the books i never read the books uh, i know john did and other people did and i think the books go into that more so i kind of feel like they're diving into things that the well, like the human members of the covenant is what i'm saying see there is no human members of the covenant in the game see that's i think that's like a divergent thing from the game itself that, that girl like that, that girl connection. with the weird thing that would yeah, be that's reading the, the earth book or whatever the- yeah yeah i mean i i yeah i don't know why they brought humans in like that like it's weird i just but, like my first thought as i was watching the episode is are they gonna do the thing where she's john's sister no they're not he's having memories i think but i don't think they're gonna be related or something like that like that's like they're like Sounds very Star Trek. Mystically connected or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Like as soon as he touched the 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 object, it ignited or turned on, and he's the only person that could turn it on, and like that yeah. kind of thing. I mean, yeah, the the plot there is very good. All right. I mean, I could see. I want to see where that's going if it goes yeah. to anything bigger. Um, yeah. That would be weird because these people were kidnapped when they were young and, and, and doctored into the military. So he should not know his past at all. He would not know anything. So I don't see how she would be related to him. I, I, I don't think those would be connected. Yeah. That's just my thought. Mm. Who the hell knows? Who knows? This is completely different than what you've ever seen before. I know. This is only based... This is all loosely based off the video game. That's what their like big thing when they were on this movie was. It's just we're just using the world that was Halo. Yeah. And we're telling our own story based off of these characters. Yeah. It's they're just using the IP. It's just funny that every character looks exactly like the characters from the video game, but not the same story. It's just that's my only weird thing about it. Yeah. He's like, oh, wow, these all look exactly like the people that were in the video game I played, but they're not telling the same story that I watched. Yeah, they're t- I mean... That's all, like, Halsey looks exactly like Halsey. Yeah, um, but, see, Halsey... The general there looks exactly like the general from the first game. Yep. Keys, is that his name? Well, they ch- they did some some swapping of people, too, because he is now married to Halsey, well, I think they daughter. were married. They were point. married, yeah. and that that's all new. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, Cortana is based off of Halsey. I mean, yes. yeah. that's, she should look like her, but... Yeah. Um, anyway, we'll see. Episode 2 lands uh, tomorrow. Yes. Uh, right? Wednesday? No. No. Tomorrow Moonlight. is uh, Moon Knight. Yeah. So, I mean, for you, Mark, I give Halo Episode 1 and 8... Uh, I'm I'm interested to see where it's going. Uh, I I don't know where I want to see what t- episode two is like. Uh, what do you What do you give Halo episode one so far? Like? I give episode one. I'll go with the same thing. I'll say eight. It's good. It's good. Just good. Yeah. It didn't blow me away. It didn't disappoint no. me. I enjoyed the first just good. twenty minutes of. Yeah, yeah. I thought that the that Spartans was kicking Covenant butt. I thought the action was well done. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I just want to see what episode two is going to bring us because that's where I hear there's some trouble. But yeah, I want to see that for myself. Yeah. Um, now, tomorrow, episode one of Moon Knight lands. Yes. Um, Moon Knight. Mark Spector hits now, your television screens. We'll be talking about this on Monday. We'll be talking yes. about our, our thoughts with episode one. 
the reviews have been coming out. They are positive. Um, I think it's almost an 80% Rotten Tomatoes, but the, there's only 31 critics have rated it so far. So that number can go up. Um, I, I, I feel like we, we won't really know tomorrow where everything settles. Um, but man, yes. it's tomorrow I got to get to work super early. So when I get home, I am watching Moon Knight when I get home. I'm, so I'm very tempted to just watch it before I come to work tomorrow. That's what I did with Halo, but tomorrow I gotta go to work for seven in the morning. So I will no, have no it's time. Not, that's not gonna happen. No, I will have no time. But I'm very tempted because it's it's gonna be really good. Yeah. I'm really excited I'm, for this. I know. I'm pumped, man. It's gonna be good. I have been I'll 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 admit that I totally am going to admit that I have a huge bias towards this character. So I am probably putting this game this show at a higher level than any other show that's come out only because of who the character is and the fact that i've been a fan of moon knight since the 80s when it came out because he has the same first name as me and when you're younger you don't see that often and when you find something like that you want to like i'm gonna like oh i'm supporting that because we have the same name just dumb, but that's what I did. So, yeah. Yeah. Makes me regret when I was younger selling all my Moon Knights. I'll tell you that. Why would you do that? Because when I was in my teenage years, I wasn't into comic books and they were worth nothing. So I just like sold them for chump change at a tag sale at my parents' had, along with my Atari 2600 and uh, my Castle Gray Skull with all the He Man. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, uh, uh, uh. when you were when you were younger, that stuff didn't mean that was worth nothing. No, I I agree, Mark. I regrettably sold old video game systems when I was younger, not realizing yeah. that when I yeah. would reach my like, 30s, yeah, I, I would know want to rebuy. Twenty years them. ago, that if I hold on to these things for twenty years, I'd be a millionaire because I could get rid of them then and just well, you know. I mean, I for me, it's a sentimental. I wish I kept them because oh, not now me. I'm, I'm more like I could have made a decent chuck of change off all this stuff. Sort of. I mean, like I still I, tempted to go to my. I still like have plans to, to tackle my parents' basement one of these days and go through all the stuff that's down there, all the toys that I've left in my parents' basement. Well, I don't know why you haven't before they get ruined if they're not already. Well, just, ruined. No, they're all in boxes and organized and stuff I was just going through them all you never know you, uh, mice if they're not you know mice can definitely get in the ruin thing so i would yeah. get in there Matt, mark don't wait well there was a whole pandemic that happened so i didn't have time to they couldn't do it then it's your family i know but i'm not yeah gonna go over there and there was stuff going on but it's a plan for the summer just to you should tackle do it that. you should do it uh, I know there's a bunch of stuff in my own room, my old room that I've like kept in my parents in my closet at my old house. That Josh is like, you need to get this stuff out of here. So I gotta go get all that stuff. He needs the space. I mean, yes, he needs to spread his wings and fly like a bird. That's his permanent residence. You're taking up his space. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Come on, Mark, get with the program yeah um what okay anyway so yeah moon, moon night tomorrow yes yeah, coming out we're very excited we'll be talking about it on monday how much do you know about moon night brian i don't really know much about moon night well good thing you don't because i got a bunch of information to tell you about moon night you bring it to me all right uh moon night officially uh was published by marvel comics as you know it is a marvel show uh was created by doug uh i always miss this guy's name up Monish, he was the writer of it, and uh, Don Perlin was the artist. Mm -hmm. uh, the character first appeared not in his own book, which is very Marvel. He of first course. appeared in Werewolf by Night, number 32, in August 1975. Wow. I remember him from his own series in the 80s, which is when I first found out about him. Uh, he's a son of a rabbi. Mark Spector is the character's original name. 
served as a Marine and briefly as a CIA operative before becoming a mercenary alongside his friend, Jean-Paul Frenchy Champ. Can't go wrong with that name. No. During a job in the Sudan, uh, Spectre is appalled when ruthless fellow mercenary Raoul Bushman attacks and kills archaeologist Dr. Alrani Al Al in front of the man's daughter and colleague, Marlene Alrani. Uh, Spectre then fights this guy. He was left for dead, uh, being mortally wounded. He reaches uh, Alrani's recently unearthed tomb and is placed before a statue of the Egyptian moon god, Kenoshu. Spectre dies, then suddenly revives, fully healed. He claims, Mark Spectre, that Kenoshu wants him to be the moon's knight, the left fist of Kenoshu. The right fist of Kenoshu pops up later on in the Moon Knight story and is actually in the new Moon Knight story, which is out now. Yes. Uh, redeeming his life of violence by now protecting and avenging the innocent. While early stories imply Spectre is merely insane, it is later revealed Kenoshu is real, one of several entities from the other void, a dimension outside normal time and space, once worshipped by ancient Earth people. On his return to the States, Spectre invests his mercenary profits into becoming the crime fighter Moon Knight, aided by before mentioned Frenchie and Marlene Alrani, who becomes his lover and eventually the mother of his daughter. Along with his costume alter ego, he primarily uses three other identities to gain info in different social circles. Stephen Grant, a billionaire businessman, Jake Lockley, a taxi cab driver, and a student consultant, Mr. Knight, which is what he's using in the new Moon Knight books. So what they're going with the new show mm -hmm. that's coming out is, which is later revealed in the Moon Knight comics, that he has dissociative identity disorder, incorrectly referred to as schizophrenia in some stories. Yep. So that's not what it is. It's a dissociative identity disorder. And that alters, that alter things known as Grant and Lockley originally manifested during his childhood. Other subsequent identities, including an unaired unnamed redheaded girl, little girl, and an astronaut have briefly emerged at other points during his adulthood. So there's other stuff that goes along with that, but I think that's where they're diving, in, diving into. And Moon Knight is not superhero. He doesn't have supernatural powers or anything. He's just a la Batman, a rich billionaire who fights crime. Yeah, but but has that. has the the associative disorder, multiple personality disorder. Yeah, I mean, I, I like we don't know where they're going to be taking the show, so it'll be interesting. Well, it's been hinted at, and I'm a, I know you only watched that one trailer, and you haven't yes. seen anything else since then. But yeah. it's been hinted at in other things and in uh, stories about the show that uh, the character we've seen in the trailer yeah is one of these identities this associative identity disorder that has popped up and this is the story of that identity finding out that it is a part of the hive mind that is mark specter and it's gonna be dark they're saying yeah. they're not and Mark Spector will pop up because there is a scene in one of the trailers where he picks up a phone and someone's like, Mark, Mark. And he's like, who's Mark? And they're like, don't joke around with me. Mm. So I think they're going around with the story that this is like the first time in his adulthood that the dissociative disorder has popped up. And this identity has been around for a while now and has established yeah. a, a a section of the world and that the other Mark Spector's identity, original identity is trying to come back out. Right. right and the right. Moon Knight is coming out at the same time. Ooh, it's going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be dark. It's yeah. going to be, and I heard that they really delve into the, 
the DID story and explain it and dive deep into it and really like give it justice and everything. Yeah. So. I mean, I mean, now that they pull the bandaid off with the Netflix Marvel shows coming over and allowing yeah. TV MA stuff. Now I kind of feel like, well, with Moon Knight, they can push that boundary a little yes. bit. Yeah. There will be a lot of blood. There will be a lot of death. There will be a lot of dismemberment. I mean, you don't even need blood and death. I mean, you could just have a heavy topic. You know, you can. Well, Moon Knight kills a lot of people. I know, but I mean, he kills a lot of bad them. guys. Yeah. So. Yeah. Should be good. Um, it's I, only six I, episodes, so it's not going to be a long. That's fine. That's all. Long you need. gestation. So. I mean, most of these Marvel shows. Gonna get gonna get through a lot of stuff in six episodes, I think. Yeah. I think Halo is more than six episodes too. Yes, I think it's like eight Nine. to ten. Yeah, it's I'm like that. Yeah, I have, I was like, oh, I thought it was only only six, but I looked it up. It's like a lot more than that. Um, now this Friday on April Fool's Day, M- Morbius Mobius comes out. Yes, the the review the, the review embargo comes out tomorrow, drops tomorrow, which is. Uh, I am going to skip it. I really have no interest in seeing this movie at this point. I never saw Venom 2. I have no interest in seeing Venom 2. Um, I, I will probably be one of those people who will watch a spoiler review and see and hear everything that happens. Yes. It's 10 episodes, Halo, by the way. Wow, wow. It's already been renewed, renewed for a second season. Yeah, I heard. I heard. Um, you can also watch it on Showtime, not just on Paramount Plus. I found out too. No, I don't have Showtime. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I don't know about this movie. How do you? How? What are your feelings about this? I won't movie? be seeing it. So. Same. And it, probably for the different, a different, well, a definitely a different reason than you. I do not like the lead actor, and I will not probably watch it because of that. You don't like Jared Leto. I don't. I think he's a terrible actor. Everybody's got their person. I don't like Tom Cruise. So yeah, yeah. There you go. I mean, I get yeah. it. I, you already not, ruined the Joker. I'm not gonna watch him ruin Mobius. I'm not gonna um, Morbius, whatever his name is. I I'm I I'm not gonna criticize you for it, Mark. Well, it's two things. It's not like I'm not a fan of Jared Leto, and I'm also not a fan of any movie Sony does without Marvel being attached, like totally. Yeah. Sony alone movies don't turn out well i.e the andrew garfield spider-man well i won't even go back that far i will well the andrew garfield spider-man one was good just two was was terrible yes but since they've taken on since marvel started their own stuff and sony's has their own stuff going on at the same time the venom 2 was terrible spider-man 2 was terrible the original spider-man 2 or the Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man 2. So their track record isn't very well. Isn't yeah, very I mean, good. Venom 1, it's like, I, I enjoyed it for what it was, but then when the reviews came It also out, wasn't Venom, that good either. No, it, it wasn't was that really good. bad. It was, it was really... Fun, I knew what I was getting into, and it was just like a fun... It was a, it was a popcorn movie. Yeah. There really wasn't a lot of depth to it. The reviews, pe- people were saying, if you saw Venom 1, Venom 2 yes. was more the same... That was just yeah. kind of like, well, I don't need to go see that thing. Yeah, it really wasn't. Yeah, they didn't do Carnage very well. Yeah, that's what I heard. Like Woody Harrelson was good, but it was just not the writing wasn't there. Yeah, so more. It didn't like make me care about anything. Like I was like, I don't care what happens here. What I'm interested in is Mobius. Okay, this is what I really am interested in hearing about how this comes about. I'm confused here. So, in the trailer, we see that uh, Michael Keaton is back as Vulture. Now, yes. Michael Keaton is from, uh, he was- Tom in- Holland's universe. Yes. But, but the- Venom isn't. But Venom is referenced by Mobius in the trailer yes. at the end. Yes. And we see a picture of Spider-Man on a poster that says murderer on it. Yes. I'm- I, my mind is breaking. I so want to know why, how this is all connected. I agree with that because they pulled Venom out of his universe 
brought him in for brought him like in for one a scene. microsecond scene at the end of No Way Home for no the, reason. Sim, no, for one reason, the symbiote was left over. Yes. So does Venom, that mean Venom is now like they're went, acknowledging Venom is now in the Tom Holland universe? No, but he went back. Remember? But the, no, but but I'm the saying, symbiote, but the, the, the symbiote, symbiote, yes, is still here. So yes. they say that the symbiote has already taken over somebody. We we haven't seen that yet. We just know the symbiote is left over. Well, I'm saying by referencing him, that would well, mean that the symbiote is here. No, the symbiote is here. We saw it on the the table. It stayed. I get that. That's and what I'm saying. He and went it attached back. To the bartender. He went back to yes. his universe. I agree with that. So, but I'm uh, saying. But Venom didn't do anything while he was here. Yes. That would ref- that would make referencing him make sense. At, at all. He did nothing. So you would have to have, in logically saying that, of him men- mentioning Venom. How is Vulture? And they mentioning Venom. How is Vulture? No, is that the if they were to say they mentioned Venom in this movie, and then you also have the connection of michael keaton being in this movie you're then attaching morbius to the tom holland universe yes and then also saying that venom exists has exist now exists in this universe through that symbiote that was left in no way home no, i i think it's opposite i think this is a ta- this is sony's universe so Venom exists in this world. Tom uh, Tom Hardy exists in this world with Mobius, but also Spider Man, but also the Vulture. And I'm very so, confused. Oddly enough, the Vulture is the Vulture in Tom Holland's universe and in Andrew Garfield's universe. Andrew Garfield didn't have Vulture. Michael Keaton did not play the Vulture. And my- that's what I'm saying. So, which universe is this? What was Andrew Garfield have anything to do with? Because the, the I thought the the thought process was that the, this universe was the Morbius Venom universe was the Andrew Garfield universe. No, no, Andrew Garfield's not going to be in this. But there's a Spider Man in this. What's Tom Holland Spider Man? Because it says murderer on it. He killed. It doesn't Tom. show Tom Holland's face, though. But that's his suit. That's his suit. So that's, Tom that's what I'm suit. saying. So, okay, so that puts Morbius in the Tom Holland universe, correct? Yes. So the Venom that they're referencing in this movie is the symbiote that was left behind at the end of No Way Home, uh, which then makes attaches no to somebody and becomes Venom. No, but I think they're referencing Tom Hardy's Venom. How can you? Because he's not in that universe. I don't know, Mark, but I don't know. We, I guess we, we have to wait and see where what happens. I, I don't know. I'm confused. I argue some. I, I see what you're saying, but I argue the other way. I'm not saying There's I'm no right. There's no other way it could work, though. But that's how I'm thinking. But writing it out, if I was writing this movie... And logically, nobody, nobody had an idea what they're doing. With their logically, movie. thinking about this, you have to have that reference referencing. Can't reference the Tom Hardy Venom. But Mark, let's let's play this game. This because Tom Hardy wasn't in this universe. But Mark, Mark, hold on. Put a pin in this. Put a pin in what you're saying. This movie was supposed to come out before the last Spider-Man movie. So you're saying, saying this is retconning. This has Last been movie. pushed three times. So this that's was supposed to come so out. This last is not summer. connected to anything, is what you're saying. What I'm saying is it's in the Sony Spider-Man universe, which I get includes that. Tom Hardy as Venom, which in, but them adding that scene to the end of No Way Home with Tom with negates Tom Hardy this movie. Negates. <laughs> something it, it kind of throws a wrench in the work it I does think. it messes up this whole movie i think that's I like think. a scene it's such a pivotal scene that they threw it in the trailer yeah i, I don't know so if you're gonna have this in the trailer you're ref- you're saying that tom hardy's venom and, and this Vulture. character jared leto are all in the tom holland universe yes but, but 
So there's Tom Holland as a different Venom in this universe? Unless, unless when the whole time jump happened, that brings that I don't know, Mark. My brain hurts. All I'm saying is I'm confused as you are. And that's the only thing that interests me about this movie is to see where everything lies. The only thing that would make sense to this would be if they were saying, if they end up saying the Venom that's referenced in this movie is not Tom Holland's Venom or Tom Hardy's Venom. Maybe. It would have to be a different Venom. Right? That's the only thing that would make sense. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I agree with you. Because going forward, that. Marvel has already put out the thing at the end of No Way Home. Yes. Now you have this movie that comes out after that, even yes. though it was supposed to come out before. Right. Which is all these Disney shows are the same thing. We're supposed to come out before all these other movies. Yes. That are out now. So the movies and shows are off kilter timeline wise. Yes. So is this movie now. So now you've set the precedent. Tom Holland went back to his universe, or Tom Hardy went back to his universe. Yes. So if you rent- mentioned Venom in this movie, it can be Tom Hardy, but can't be the same character of Tom Hardy. Like he can't be the 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 somewhat good Venom. But then you're making the audience think. And we know Too much. the only yeah. Venom we know of is Tom Hardy. So yes. or, my brain. Or, uh, Topher Grace. Yeah, but my brain is going to say that is Tom Hall, uh, Tom yes. uh, Hardy. Yes. Venom. Yes. I, I, yes. So I, I don't know. I mean, we don't need to have like a map before you read, see this movie. I don't yes. know. Yeah. I'm interested to see. I want to see. They painted themselves into a corner, is what they did. I feel like it, but we won't know until we see it, until what they tell us, right? So. Well, because it's by that scene alone, it's like you paint yourself into a corner. Michael Keaton is back as Vulture. I mean, and then you have him referencing Venom when he shakes that guy's hand. And yes. then on top of that, we see that poster. So I I, I don't know what to believe. What what world are we in? I, I don't know. It's the, the, the issue of one hand not but knowing what the other hand is doing. I will say this. This movie was originally supposed to come out prior to No Way Home. So this, this could have taken place before the, uh, before the whole timeline thing got screwed up anyway. Yeah. So because if it says murderer, this takes place. In During the, the time, time when they think Spider- Spider-Man. Spider-Man had everyone killed. erased brain erased right so it takes place in a time where spider-man had just accused of the mysterio being killed thing. Yeah. yeah so it could be taking place right before no way then how would anyone know who venom was see so yeah still messed up that's the thing venom there's is, still that yeah i know hole i know because they brought venom in and he did just hung out in mexico at a resort somewhere and he was being told about the hap the snapping and everything yes and then that piece of uh symbiote stayed yes. that was literally why they brought him in and out is yes. to keep that symbiote but they didn't yeah. give a shit about his character yeah yeah so the whole thing with them being like no i'm venom like no i'm kidding i'm just doctor so and so yeah that makes no sense to anybody I know. It, it wouldn't to us it makes to more, us, the watcher makes sense, but the people in the story, it wouldn't make any sense. Makes no sense, and I, I am confused as you. And are. how would he know who Venom is? Right, <laughs> right, because if he is in the same world as Vulture in Spider-Man, there is no Venom. There is no Venom. Yes, I know. This is why I'm confused. <laughs> now we you get what I'm saying. I, I don't know what the hell this movie's trying to tell me. <sighs> Uh, right i think they paint i think you're right they painted themselves in the corner this they movie themselves came out too late it should have come out before this movie's yeah this movie's in the wrong place it's out of time it's out of link with anything out of else sync. yeah i don't know i don't know no one cares it. about it 
it, yeah. it's like coming out on April Fool's Day. I know, which is even funny. Which I don't believe it's actually coming out that day still. I'm waiting until Friday before it actually, like, I believe it's out. The funny thing is, hold on. On, so the running gag with this movie, we should wrap up the show, but the running gag is people on social medias have now be, created this, this w- false universe where Mobius comes out Friday and it is the number one movie for the year and it wins all the awards <laughs> and it's the best MCU movie of all time. Um, so on Yahoo, people are already giving this movie five star reviews, but yeah. here, I'm going to read one to you. This guy wrote five star is a day ago, five star review. It was an amazing experience to be able to see this moving picture with my Oculus eyeballs. When Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man appeared, let's just say somebody needed their nappy changed. Jared Leto was great, and this would this would love to taste his farts. The appearance from Robert Pattinson was unexpected. Let's just say I, I shouldn't brought more nappies. The curry that the cinema served was extraordinary. Bubbly and left me on the toilet for about a half a decade. Paula Dean is an excellent chef. <laughs> I, this is what's happening. Um, oh, man. Yeah. Someone wrote, holy moly, scrumptious, delicious. That fat Tom Holland as Nathan Drake in this movie was so unexpected and it made so special. And Tom Holland as Peter Parker shows up and I'm like, poggers, my friends. And see, people, and they were a review bombing this movie opposite. They're coming up with these crazy things. And on Reddit, there's like a whole subreddit where Mobius becomes like the biggest uh, MCU movie since Endgame. It's fucking bonkers, man. Anyway, Mobius. So, yeah. Here's the, the story behind them the movie Mobius, Morbius, whatever it's called. Uh, this film, the script came out, was, was written in November of 2017. Leto and Espinoza officially joined in June of 2018. Uh, work began in earnest at the end of the year with further, future, further casting ahead of production starting in London in February of 2019. Filming was begun. Uh, the filming was confirmed to have completed in June of 2019. Uh, The movie was delayed several times from the initial July 2020 start date. So this movie was supposed to have come out in 2020. Yeah. Uh, Reshoots were done after the first trailer released in January of 2020. It included an image of Spider-Man that commentators equated to the Sam Raimi directed Spider-Man trilogy, though it appeared to be used as a reference to the ending of Far From Home. The trailer also included a brief appearance by Michael Keaton reprising his role as Vulture. So I co-produced Marvel and movie. I just read that Vulture, because of the the big multiple, uh, the the whole Doctor Strange thing. Yes. uh, What I'm reading is that the Vulture gets moved over to their universe. Yes. Reshoots from the film began in Los Angeles in early February 2020 and were finished a month later when film production around the United States were halted due to COVID. At the end of March, the film's first release date was pushed back to March 19th, 2021, due to the pandemic. And then in January 2021, the film was delayed again, first to October of 2021, and then January 21st of 2022. When uh, No Time to Die was moved to the October 21 date. So that's why it got moved because of uh, James Bond. At the end of January, later revealed that additional research reshoots were taking place in mid February. The film's release was moved back another week at the end of April 2021, moving it moving to January 28th, 2022. At the start of January 2022, the film was delayed to April 2022. Yeah. Due to the box office success of Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah. 
which Sony hoped would continue throughout early 2022. Later that month, uh, Corey Johnson was revealed to have a role in the film. I don't know who that is and why that's important, but in well, March, visual effects supervisor Marky e. Butler revealed that motion capture technology had been used for Leto to portray Morbius in the vampire form. So, well, I just read, okay, Vulture gets moved over to their universe and Mobius exists with the Tom Hardy world. And the Vulture supposedly is an end credit scene. So the Vulture uh, they show in the trailer might is just like an ending thing. Yeah. Supposedly. Possibly. Possibly. But that Vulture got moved over for this movie. So that yeah. explains it. The Spider-Man, what Spider-Man is in this world? Is it Tom? Is it Tom Holland? Is it going to be another one? I, I, they don't know. But to me, that looked like Tom Holland's uh, uh, yeah. Spider Man suit in that picture. So I don't know. We will wait. And I'm gonna uh, tomorrow once the reviews go up, and if I see any spoiler ones, I'm gonna dive in. I really want to know, but I don't want to pay to know either. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mark. We should wrap the show up because we've gone over an hour. Yes. I still got to edit this bad boy. So, from sleuthing I just did online, that yeah. Corey Johnson, uh, who is an actor, who's been into multiple movies and multiple shows, uh, is listed as Mr. Fox, who is an integral part of, I think, that Morbius universe, if I remember correctly. You probably know more about this than I do. But... I don't know anything about Morbius. I mean, okay. I oh, I have a couple a handful of comics, but I was not. A and he's going to be in Batgirl as well. So oh, okay, that's the connection there. But anyway, so just Fox. Yes. So I don't know. Yeah. So now the thing is, which Spider-Man does this universe have? Um, I think it's Andrew Garfield's. I think this is what they're heading towards. Uh, I don't think I think it's gonna be Tom Holland in, in some weird way. No, I think it's this is the perfect way for them to take that momentum that came from No Way Home for Andrew Garfield's Spider Man, do a Spider Man three for Andrew Garfield. Proper. Proper. Use Michael Keaton as Vulture, Mobius, Jared Leto, Tom Hardy Venom. Then you get your other three Sinister Six folks together. And that's when you have like the big Sinister Six movie that they've been talking about for years. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. We'll find out. I mean, maybe. We'll see. Get back Paul Giamatti and his Rhino. <laughs> which he, he, you know, that was a cool moment. And then it went away. It went away because that's in his credits. universe. You technically have that character there already. Yeah. And that was what they were leading towards with that movie. They were leading towards the Sinister Six. That was where that was going. But it, it just never worked. Critically, it got panned. And but I think now with that momentum from No Way Home, you could use this build that you've done with Tom Hardy and now with Jared Leto. And if you bring Michael Keaton in as the vulture for that universe, you bring in somebody for the goblin for that universe. Well, they already had a goblin from Andrew Garfield's movies. Remember? They had a Norman Osborn. Oh, was it the the, the friend there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah remember? Yeah. So they could still do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, or right, Harry well, Osborn they had. They didn't really get into the Norman Osborn side. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was. Yeah. Right. So. All right. We there you wrap, go. We wrap this up. So everyone get out and check out Morbius this tell weekend. Us, tell us all about it. <laughs> tell us all about it so we don't have to watch it. Um. Next week, we'll be talking about Moon Knight, Halo, yes. Episode 2, yes. and whatever and we'll, else. Morbius comes out, we'll talk about that. And whoever else Will Smith decides to slap during the week. Yes, yes. The slapping has started, my friends. Yes, so it has begun. It's begun. The season of the slapping. The season of the slap. It's the season of the slap. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will be back next Monday. Uh, like us and follow us. We'll see you on Facebook, on the YouTubes, on the iTunes, on the uh, Spotify. Spotify is all the places. All like the us, places. message us, tell us you like us. Make us feel good about ourselves. And as always, be good, be safe.
be kind. Rewind.